this is live prepper here. I'm I'm out about. You can tell I'm not sitting at my home doing stuff or not hid in my storage room. The fact is I'm doing it on three different series why people prep. And the fact is none of it's really wrong. As I've done my research and I read up on a lot of it, it really opened my eyes up to more. Because anything can happen. Fact is that any fact is this simple. If you prep you're a step up. What I'm saying is not telling you to spend your life savings, but even if you prep for whatever reason it is to have extra food and water uh, and uh, supplies or things on hand in case something should happen from you know the power going out to an earthquake or hurricane whatever it is in your area you're a step up over a lot of people that has really become very dependent and the one I'm going to do on today is talking about Polish shift and I did the research on it and I was really amazed on some things that um, scientists actually started to get a little bit concerned on the polar ship because things is changing. But it's going at a slow, slow degree level. Now, I can sit here and read all this off to you or I could just let you read it. But the fact is, it, sh it talks about this here. I hope you can see this. Uh, it talks about the polar shift and events of it happening and things. And you can see here what it's talking about. And you know, when I read this, it, it just made me think, even though it's a few millimeters, and, they, and then they're realizing that the polar shift has changed. Now they're becoming concerned because it's a possibility that it could be dramatic. What if it just changed all at once? That's what a lot of these people are truly concerned about, is the constant change. The fact is, a lot of states in the United States will be affected by it, as well as some of the others. The, um, <clears throat> New York is among one of the states, uh, California. Most of the coastal states will be affected. Florida won't be affected because, and some of the others, because if it is a total polar shift, we will lose, uh, some, some of the islands will lose land, and some of the islands will gain and then there will be some that will be just flat out flooded so the fact is is that they were talking about the polar ship in effect affecting canada it would totally go upside down and if canada is so used to importing all their foods and their supplies they're used to living in the cold weather and things but the problem is is they really believe that uh these countries and stuff, they're so used to everything being imported to them, is is not going to know really how to handle it, and not think that everything's going to turn green overnight. If you went from a cold climate to almost to this warm climate, don't expect you know palm trees all over the place. It's, it's the fact is, is they believe that many of the animals will go extinct, such as animals that's designed for strictly cold weather will not be able to function in warm weather at all. Research has found where they was finding macedons, mammals, and they was taking the tusks, and they was taking them and selling them, and people was carving things out of these ivories and everything. Then they found the macedons frozen. Now this wasn't just gradually frozen; the meat was still good. This here was flash frozen instantly. They said the animals that even humans was able to eat off this meat. They was using the fur, the hide off of these uh, petrified frozen creatures to, to keep themselves warm as well. I've seen some pictures and things showing them using the Macedon tusks uh, over their nomad homes as like doorways and things like that. So there was a drastic change instantly in the polar shift. Now this is why some people do prep because they are concerned on this overall fact that the polar shift could just grasp, just happen boom like that. It's gradually changing. It changes. It is it's a possibility it could happen in our lifetime. It may not even happen in our lifetime. But the fact is is that something is changing every day. Because you could tell in the climate that things are changing every day. It's part of it man-made. Yes, yeah, part of it is. But part of it is Mother Nature also. And then also here, you can see right here. And I want to just let you read this. Like I said, it's a lot easier for me to let you just read all this than me just sitting here reading it from it. As I do the research on this polar shift, there's a lot of truth behind it. I can see why some scientists are becoming concerned. Location has a lot to do with it. Uh, if you pull up the list of 
places that would be safe. I seen a map. It showed a map of the changes of what would be affected. Like I said, many of the many of the uh, countries and stuff that are warm climate will become cold. Many of the cold climates will become warm. Many of the green areas will become desert. Some of them will uh, lose uh, several miles of land and turn into ocean. Some of them will gain land and the ocean will go back. So that you know, you're looking at a lot of changes here now. It was it, of course you just talk about you know literature and everything, and you you'll find countless books. I mean, if you want to know more about this stuff, you know, read up on it. It's the best thing to do. Well, I say right here is the lower article right here. And I mean, I could go all day and pull up more and more research and more and more of uh, what if scenarios and uh, possibilities. But this is just printed out. This is written for you to read. So you can see right here for yourself what it is saying by reading this here. I mean, this is really, really a lot to, to think about. I can see why a lot of preppers prep because of the polo shift. And I can see also that if you are one of them that's concerned about the polo shift, you need to find out about where you're living at. You need to find out if that maybe you need to move from there. Now, I'm living in Ohio now. Tennessee was also considered on the list. So I would have been in good shape no matter where I was at, whether I'm in Ohio or in Tennessee. But a lot of the areas that we are living at now, it's not necessarily we're going to be safe on it because, uh, you know, they're talking about one of these days, you know, Los Angeles fall into the sea. You know, Alexander the Great went into the ocean. Many of this lost civilizations that got discovered was found in the ocean where it was just a total collapse, earthquake, uh, volcano action, whatever it was, it went into uh, to the ocean. So it's just a real simple subject. I can see why some preppers choose to prep because the polar ship is... Whatever reason it is, it's just something bothered them. And uh, maybe it's where they live at. Maybe they were seeing things. You know, people, some people, most people can be in tune to things like nature or things like that. If it don't feel right, if it doesn't feel right, sometimes you need to listen to it. So, again, like I say, there's a lot to learn about it. Polar shift is uh, shifting every day. It's not uh, man-made. It's Mother Nature itself, basically, but I do think man, now in my opinion, I think man has a lot to do with it. I think because uh, of building things and destroying things and uh, rerouting things, basically, creating uh, man-made lakes, create, uh, using these dams to dam up the water and changing the factor scales for the entire world has a lot to do with it, I think. I really do. So, you know, you know, try I mean, read it. Research it. And, you know, there's just something to think about. What if tomorrow you wake up or, you know, the, another thing that does something you need to think about, what if it does happen? Would the, pe would the government of the world give us enough notice to get out from wherever we was in the danger zone? Would they give us, I mean, if they gave you just a 24-hour notice, chaos. People are going to be driving back to back, trying to get out. But what about the ones that can't get out? What about the ones that's handicapped or the seniors or, or they just don't have transportation? What about the ones that couldn't get out because the traffic was so bad they couldn't get out? Have you even thought about the possibility that, depends on what area you're living in, having you a special room set aside, you know? I mean, you got to think about that. That's something to really think about. You know, if I had the money, building me a special room, not, you know, you hear them talk about panic rooms. But if I could afford to build a special room with uh, added insulation and um, paneling and things like that and uh, set my own uh, water supply or, you know, septic tank up with it and everything like that, even if I couldn't do that, even if I just fished it where I had, you know, four or five, 55 gallon grubs in there and food lasts me for a while and things like that to, uh, until help got to me to, to try to survive and stay warm. That's a lot to think about building, just building a room like that.
you know, some of these people are building underground bunkers. But uh, to build that underground bunker, I think we need to take everything into effect. And one of them is the polar ship. If I had the money, doggone right, I'd be building me an uh, underground bunker or, or a panic room. Uh, I told a friend I wanted to get a couple of those metal storage containers and lower them into the ground and use them as a foundation. But I want to put concrete also around them, double insulate them all the way around and create a nice comfortable environment and create an underground water system things like that so that's something to think about I mean really it is I mean you got a lot of people living in tropical areas now and they said uh, they don't have a cold they don't have anything their, their houses are not set up to stay warm or anything like that but what if you are in a tropical area and you are a possibility it could wind up in a cold area with a massive polar shift. Because I'll tell you, 24 hours is not going to give people enough time to get out. Most people are not going to be able to make it out. Most people are going to be stuck where they are. And a lot of them are just not going to leave either because they just don't have no place to go. That's something to think about. So, uh, people who preps because of, they believe in the polar shift could happen. I don't see nothing wrong with it. it. It has a lot of good points. It makes me think that, you know, that's, that's a possibility. For me, the reason I prep because I really believe anything could happen. You know, I, I believe that it could be economic collapse. It could be the polar ship. It could be the sun flares. It could be anything uh, from genetic experiments to uh, virus outbreaks to anything. It's a lot to think about. So, this is one of the reasons preppers prep for the polar ship. And this is live prepper here and I want y'all be safe, be happy, bless you all.